How's it? In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this finance tracker, which is inside of my bigger finance OS dashboard. So the way this works is in this view, you can add new income and then you can link this to a bank account. You can add in the dollar amount. You can link it to an income source. And then you also have a space where you can upload the invoice. And the same goes for expenses. It's the same process. You can of course change the date as well. And then all of your income will show in this view, grouped according to the month with the total next to it. Same for expenses, all of your expenses grouped according to the month with the total. And then in this last view, it will show both of them, both the income and expenses with the total profit next to each month. And then for the finance record, you can also have these charts that shows your total income and expenses for each of the income and expense sources. A link to this finance OS dashboard will be in the description below, along with a walkthrough video showing you exactly how to use it in case you just wanna save yourself some time and get this dashboard for yourself. Now with that out of the way, let's go to a new page and start building. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and create a new table view database. We're going to call this finance tracker and let's just also go ahead and give this an icon and hide the database title, add in a new database entry and also just make this page full width. Now, if you've been following me for long enough, you already know that I'm going to create a callout box. I'm going to title this finance tracker. I'm going to drag and drop this inside, highlight the name, make it bold, underline it, change the color to green and then also just add in the icon in here. So with any new database, you start with a table view and you just add in all of the properties that you're going to need, which in this case is going to be a date property. We're also going to have a select property, which is going to be for the type. So whether this is income or expense. So let's just add in income over here and expense. And let's just make this one red and this one green. And then we're also going to have a number property for the income. So let's just add that in and change the number format to the US dollar or whatever currency you're using. And let's just duplicate this for the expense, add that in. Let's add a files and media property, which is going to be for the invoice. Next is going to be the bank accounts, which we're just going to do through a normal select property. In the finance OS, I have it through a relation to another database, as you can see over here, where it also shows the balance of your bank account. And then the same for income and expense sources, you can link it to a different database where you can do more calculations and more things like I have here. So you can see how much you've earned this month for each of your sources. Uh, these can be linked over here. You have your monthly goal, the amount remaining, same with expenses, and this links to the budget tracker, but obviously I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial. This one is just focused on the finance tracker. So for this one, we're just gonna use a normal select property. So in here for bank accounts, you wanna add your different bank accounts. So let's say for example, PayPal, let's do business and let's also do debit. And then we're gonna do the same for the income and expense sources. So let's just go ahead and add a select property and name this one income sources, duplicate it, rename this one to expense sources. And then in here, you just wanna add in your different sources. So as you can see, I've added in my different income and expense sources. And now for the last property, this is going to be a formula and this one is going to be called profit. And for this formula, we're going to edit it and we're going to take the income and just minus it with the expenses and then also just change the number format to whatever currency you're using. So if we go ahead and add in some income here and then add an expense, then the profit should show. So before we go ahead and create the views, let's just go ahead and give icons to all of these. Now for the views, this first one is going to be called today and this one is going to have a plus icon and we're going to filter this to where the type is income because this is going to be for our income and then properties, we're going to hide the type property as well as the expense amount and then also the expense sources and the profit, we don't need to see those. And then we're just going to reorder these. So let's just add in a database entry here, move the date and then have the income amount, then the bank account and then the income source, the date and the invoice. So the idea with this view is that we filter it to only show the database entries that also has today's date. So where the date is relative to today and this day. Now, if we add in a database entry, it will automatically have today's date. And then for this view, we can also just go ahead and resize the properties just so they don't take up as much space. And then we can go ahead and duplicate this view and then just remove this. And all we wanna do here is just change the icon to a minus symbol 
and then change the filter to show the expenses instead of the income. And then over here, we just wanna to go to properties and we wanna hide the income amount and then income sources, and then just show the expense ones on the view and then also just resize these a little bit. So if we add a new database entry here, this will automatically have today's date and it will be tagged as expense. Now the next view is going to be a list view and this one we're going to call income and we're just going to give this one an icon and then over here, we're going to filter this to only show the income database entries. And then for the properties on this view, we want to show the income sources, we want to show the bank account, and we want to show the income amount. And then the last thing we want to do here is just hide the database title and also just group this database by the date and then make sure to date it by the month show the newest first and just hide the no date group and then here on the month we just want to click on these three dots click on show aggregation and then here we want to go to more options sum and then income because we want to see the total income for each month. And obviously this doesn't look good because it doesn't have icons, but after we've set up the views, we're gonna create template patterns that automatically adds icons and also tags your database entries with income and expenses. So now for the expense view, we're just gonna duplicate this and rename this to expenses. We're going to add in the downwards arrow and then just change the filter to expenses. And then same thing here, we're gonna go into properties and then just hide the income ones and then show the expense properties. And then also on the monthly view, we also just wanna change this to show the total expense amount. Now for the next view, we're going to duplicate this and we're just gonna call it monthly. You could also call it profit as that also makes sense, but let's just go ahead and add an icon. And then here we're going to remove the filter because we want both of them to show. And then we also want to both show the income and and expense sources and amounts. And then on the monthly group, we just wanna change this one to that profit formula. And then also for these three views, you also just wanna sort it according to the date property and make it descending. Now, before we create the template buttons and the charts, let's just open up one of these database entries and then click on customize layout. Over here at the top, we're gonna to click on this and then just pin the four most important properties, which is gonna be the date property. It's going to be the profit, the bank account, and then also the invoice. And let's just reorder these a little bit. And then over here on the side panel, we're going to add in the properties that we don't want to show, which is gonna be this type property. And here in the property group, we're going to add two sections. This first one is going to be called income. And then the second one is going to be called expenses. And then here, we're just going to drag the expense ones into this one and keep the income one there. I'm actually gonna move the income to the top. And now if we click apply, then you'll see that this also looks a lot cleaner. So you got these four properties up here. You just click on the toggle to open the income or the expense section. And then you can click on this to see all the hidden properties. All right, now for the template button. So click this drop down next to new, click on new template, and then just add an icon for this one. And then in here, you just wanna open the hidden properties and then just tag this one as income. So every time you use this template button, it will automatically have income tag. And we're gonna do the same for expenses. So let's just create a new template button, add an icon. This one is going to have the down arrow and then we're going to have expenses tagged for this one. And now that we have our template buttons, for the income view, we're going to set the income template button as default. And for expenses, we're gonna set this one as default. And then you also just wanna do it for the income and expense views. So basically what this does is now for this income view, if I add new income, you'll see that it automatically has this icon. And if I open this, then you'll see that the income type is automatically added, which makes it show up on this view. And of course, same goes for expenses. So if I add new expenses, then they have these icons and they also show up on the expense view. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this income view. We're gonna go copy link to view and we're gonna go ahead and create a new call it box. This is going to be called overview. And then here we're gonna add in two columns. We're going to also just highlight this, make it bold, underline it and change the color. I'm going to do blue and then I'm also going to add a chart icon. And then over here, I'm just going to paste this as a linked view database. Click on the income view, go to layout, click on chart, edit chart, and then just select this donut chart. And the reason I chose the income view is because this already has the income filter. So over here, the thing that we want to show is going to be the income sources, and then each slice needs to show the income sum. And then for the color, we're going to change this to green because this is for the income. And then we're pretty much gonna do the exact same thing for the expenses, so let's just duplicate this, move this into this column, 
and then we're just going to rename this to expenses and we're going to select this icon and then here instead of income sources it's going to be expense sources and then each slice is going to show the expense amount and then the color is going to be red and then this one is still filtered to the income so let's just swap this out for expenses and there we go now it's up to you how you want to filter these but if you want to see your monthly income and expenses then you would just add this to an advanced filter and then just add in this date property and then filter it to where the date is relative to today and this month so that it will only show this month's income and expenses and if you want to go back into previous months you can just change the filter or you can have different views for different months so now if i go back here and i make this one for example 500 dollars and say that this is digital products you can see that it updates there and then same for expenses if i go here and i make this one food and I say this is let's do $150 then you can see that it updates over here as well and something that's optional is you can create another view for your invoices and filter it to where the invoice property this one is empty so you know that okay I need to go here and just fill in all of these invoices so that you're up to date and everything is logged on your finance tracker but yeah that's pretty much it for this finance tracker again if you want to grab this finance hours dashboard or check the walkthrough on how to use it to get some inspiration then just check the links in the description and with that said thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one